designing, you you don't want to work this size. This is what kids always do. They work the size, right? You need to work 10 times size so that you control the curves in your lettering. Now these letters are all going to be touching each other. So you'll be cutting out spaces that are trapped. This is a trapped space. And the saw will saw around. I am going to reduce this 10 times on a copy machine so that uh, it comes out beautiful. First of all, when you reduce anything, it looks beautiful. And second of all, when you paste it on the metal, you have total control. If you do things this size, like to be pasted on silver and you want to do a name or something, you have no control. And the, the thing that I've been teaching most of all in this class, filing, a gluing, everything, all has to do with control. So all your friends that are walking around in those halls outside that are your age, they don't have any control, but now you know how to have control. I've been teaching you the, the tips and tricks of jewelry, and that's what you're learning in this class. So you learn to work 10 times size. All designers work 10 to 15 times size. So if I'm designing a shoe, the shoe is going to be enormous. It's not going to be small. Okay, so this is his friend's name. I started working on it. Now this is now the ball's in his court, and he's going to design. And I want you to bring me in five designs from home. or copper or something and then I cut it out to the, to the shape of the mouth right I, I soldered it in mm -hmm. so I'm gonna draw sharp teeth on it and then I'm gonna and how are you gonna draw the teeth first I'm gonna use this a steel yeah so, just to outline it so I can see where it is and then I'll keep going over it and then I'll eventually get into a dental tool so I can like engrave into it once I polish it, you're gonna it's gonna look like it has a full set of teeth. So rather than making it totally cut through and you can see the teeth and spaces between them, you're just gonna engrave the teeth. Yeah, so it, it looks like it has a full set of teeth onto it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanna let this so it looks like it's um, smiling with a full set of like gold teeth. So it looks like it's rain grills. Uh huh. Yeah, so I don't think I'm gonna cut it out. I just want to show. How like how it. can you estimate about how long you've been working on this piece? Uh, I think I think when an outsider sees this, they have no idea how much time you put into this. Well, first of all, my question is, how did how did you make those heads? Did you just hammer the metal and get it flat and then cut the head out? How did you how did you get the head connected to the snake body? I casted the head separately. Yeah. So, and, and what did you cast in? How did you cast it? I used cuddle bone. I used cuddle bone and I used a piece of wood. Do I have any evidence of the cuddle bone? I'd love to see it. Do you have it in your drawer? Yeah. So I carved this piece of wood that looks like the head. Right. And I pressed it into the cuddle bone so that I can cast it into it. Oh, so and then you casted it in, yep. and it was a gravity cast, right? Yep. You melted the metal and yeah, and right gravity in. casted it. Yeah, yeah. Now you have this is only one of a lot of pieces that you have made that are, uh, you know, almost on college level. It's so beautiful. So right now here's my stone, mm -hmm. and here's the wall. Right now it doesn't really fit that that well. Like there's like you see like a gap in the top. Mm -hmm. There's like a gap that light can pass through and I'm trying to fix that. Mm. So that's a pendant really? Yeah, a pendant. I thought it was just like your ring. No. Nah. And you were going to leave one edge open. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's what's been the challenge? What's hard to do? Right now I'm trying to figure out what's the problem with my with the wall. Because it, it, the stone doesn't want to go in there properly. 
Uh, did you check that the wall is 90 degrees? Uh, no. Is the stone I'm... 90 degrees? Yeah, the stone is 90 degrees. Uh-huh. I need two stones. Should be fine. I, I'm not sure what the problem is. So I'm just going to keep on filing the sides and hope that it's going to fit properly. Right, moving. So tell me what you're doing. Uh, I'm bending the silver around the stone. So it's called burnishing. Yes. You're burnishing the metal over the stone. You're stretching it over the stone. And you got to get all the wrinkles out, right? And what do you know about doing this? Is, um, is it easy? Yeah. It's no. Easy. It's you think hard. it's easy? No, it's hard. Why is it hard? Because you need a lot of hand strength. You need a lot of power in your hands to do this burnishing. Yeah. But the stone is trapped in there for life, which is the best part of it. This is a real way to put a stone in. Not gluing it in, but burnishing it in by burnish, stretching the silver over the, the stone. I want to ask you another question. Will the burnishing tool scratch the stone? No, because it's curved. It's curved and it's shiny, right? Yes. So uh, the stone, there's no chance you're going to scratch the stone. And the stone is hard, very hard. So that's another reason why you won't scratch it. And it takes enormous labor, doesn't it? Yes. Really, really hard to do. So when you open it, you need strength, first of all. Turn this knob, it's already on. Just a little bit, that's all, until this needle comes up and shows the pressure. This is the outgoing pressure. 